All right, we're here today again with Alex from NYC Pain MD, and I have him on again today um, because the first couple of webinars we did were really popular, and he got a ton of emails asking him questions. And everybody seems to know that NYC Pain MD does a lot of work with knees, knee arthritis, and they're doing gel injections, stem cell. Um, genetic of a nerve, you know, they're doing a whole whole bunch of stuff there, and he got a lot a lot of questions. So first of all, he's going to give you his email so that if you guys have questions, you can send them to him, and then we're going to get get into this stuff. Um, the first question is: Do you guys do hips, sh shoulders, and ankles also? Right. And okay. Alex, too. Um, let me introduce you too. I I kind of forgot here. He's the the new patient coordinator for. NYC Pain MD. He's he's not a treating doctor there, but but he's in charge of the new patients education, and and he really really gets everything to run straight there. So here he is. Yeah. Hey Brad, thanks for having me on again. And uh, yeah, we had I had a lot of emails. I know you kind of summarized some of them coming in. We had a lot a lot of emails, and let me give that email right now to the listeners. So if after listening to this or even during you want to email a question in, I don't know if we'll have time to get to them, you know, during the webinar, uh, email me at the following email. It's alex, A-L-E-X, at N-Y-C hyphen pain M-D. That's alex at N-Y-C dash pain, P-A-I-N, M-D, like medical doctor dot com. Alex at N-Y-C dash pain M-D. Email whatever you think is on your mind. Um, we'll probably get a lot of emails, so I'm not sure if we'll specifically be able to talk about that but if we don't I can try to email you back personally you know during the week and then maybe we can address some of these topics but what we're going to go over today is a, a kind of common thread of questions that we got over the past few weeks and I think it'll be a kind of common to a lot of the listeners yeah so let's let's start out the the first one you seem to be getting a lot of is, is do, do you do Hips, shoulders, ankles, and other joints, too. Right. Well, uh, the answer to that is yes. A true arthritis really seems to batter knees. Uh, so it's a very popular program. But we do have a constant flow of patients asking for pain relief program for the hip, uh, which gets highly arthritic. And it's a very difficult joint to treat. Uh, as you let it get on and on because the change of that ball and the ball and socket bone area can change shape and when that gets too compressed and it's clunking around there's not much we can do so that joint you got to get on early but ankles are getting uh, more and more with athletes and runners and those type of folks and shoulders are, are also very common so yes we do treat all of those things some of the procedures that we talked about the visco supplementation nerve blocks uh, stem cells those can all be applied, and of course, those are all doctor decisions on on what to do for those. Um, and and similarly, we, uh, we we do special precision arthritis targeting. You know, most of the time, 99% of the time, with those other areas as well. And we do have a back pain program. And I know Brad, you asked me to put together a program for that. It's a little beyond what we'll talk about today, but uh, we do a lot of spines. We introduce the regenerative stem cell and PRP program for that, as well as some of the standard things that are done for pain as well. So the answer Yeah, you guys are really, you guys are, are cu cutting edge stuff. You know, you're, you know, we're talking about the, the, the visco supplementation or, or the gel injections, but you guys, you know, are doing a lot of stuff there, the stem cell, the PRP and all, all that stuff too. Yeah, you yeah, know, there's a really, uh, I, we may have talked about it last time, but, uh, there was this big popular article that came out about Jack Nicholas, the famous, maybe one of the greatest golfers of all time, who went all the way to Germany to have some stem cell procedures for his facet syndrome in his back. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, we've been doing a lot of that stuff right here in the States, right in New York. And uh, you don't have to go all the way to Germany to get, uh, you know, basically the same technology. But I think that's a whole several hours of discussion that we could do, you know, and we'll, we'll put together another program on that. Yeah, it's 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 great stuff, and and as you mentioned, you guys are doing back pain too, which is mm -hmm. great. Um, here's a question that 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 you're getting a lot. Um, um, there's people, a lot of them, it seems that they've gotten the gel injections elsewhere, and it didn't work for them because these things are, are you know, they're really starting to get popular. Um, 
what do you guys do that's 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 different that's getting that's getting results for this type of patient who's been elsewhere and has tried other things and has actually tried the visco supplementation the gel injections and it didn't work for them how how do you guys how do you guys getting getting the getting the results yeah i noticed a, a lot of those questions uh people i had heard about you know the way we do our procedures or it just made so much common sense to them that the gel should work and they went and it didn't work so and they're a little frustrated and these are people absolutely don't want to have surgery you know surgery does uh is laced with all sorts of side effects that i'm not sure people understand it's not like popping a lego toy together uh nonetheless so i i, I think you know remember i'm not a treating doctor and all of this is opinion uh on the philosophies and approaches of our clinic and uh we don't make any judgment on how any other doctors or clinics practice but our take is this you have to understand that let, let, let's go back to the anatomy of arthritis and that's what we're talking about here common osteoarthritis is a disorder where as you age the cells inside the capsule of your knee stop producing enough lubricant essentially your joints begin to dry out like an automobile with no oil and if you drive that car with no oil you grind and rub the parts now when you grind and rub knees and shoulders and ankles and hips you begin to grind down the cartilage surface which is like a teflon coating and when that happens the joint space narrows the vast majority of patients that come in to see us have been arthritic for years and by the time they come in they're at least stage three if not stage four arthritis and that's called the kelgren lawrence scale and when you get that arthritic the joint space narrows considerably so you might have 50 percent to 90 percent of the joint space gone so that's a rather tiny space that's left. And of course, that's why you're hurting because you feel the grinding, the clicking, it inflames as the joints rub together. And that's why you get pain. So now let me connect this to procedure. When that joint space narrows, this is no longer a normal joint. And in order to access that joint space, um, if you go in there, if you go into a shoulder, a knee, the hip is really tough, the ankle, you cannot possibly hit the target each and every time uh, if you go in there without medical technology. So, uh, Brad, I, I think a lot of the failures, not all, a lot of the failures come from uh, patients that go for a series of three to five weekly treatments. And maybe a well-intended doctor just feels that area and plops the, the joint in, a feeling that he may have gotten the medicine into the target so just a quick you know uh layman's kind of story on uh precision think about uh if you were an archery expert let's say you're robin hood do you want to shoot at that target with a blindfold on or do you want to have the best visualization possible you don't want it to be foggy out. you don't want to have a blindfold on you don't want someone to spin you around you want pure visualization and now in the medical world, um, uh, you know, we have technology that makes accuracy of applying medicines to very arthritic joints and tiny spaces that are left for us to treat. We have technology that makes it 99.999% accurate. So uh, this is what we think is the biggest culprit in, in, when, when visco supplementation fails. Um, and so what has to be done we, we call our technique precision arthritis targeting, but you have to use a special machine called fluoroscopic imaging. Uh, Brad, fluoroscopic imaging is a very advanced technique and these machines are very expensive, but essentially, so, you, so, so the listeners understand the procedure, that joint that's being treated, whichever it is, hip, shoulder, knee, ankle, goes under this fluoroscopic machine. Considerably, so the procedure is virtually painless. And the first step the doctor does is on, he takes the injection needle or the numbing needle and angles it appropriately. And he begins to insert the needle, putting it towards the joint space, taking sequential pictures, the fluoroscopic imaging, one by one to make sure the tip of that needle gets exactly into the joint space. But Brad, here's the key. We're not satisfied with just that visualization. 
they're going to do a second confirmatory procedure called arthrography. They're going to inject in a tiny bit of contrast media, a, a kind of milky white substance, which will confirm the needle is in the exact right place. If it's not, Brad, they're going to pull it back out, re-angle it, and redo the arthrography until they are absolutely 100% convinced, double dog sure, that that is exactly where it needs to be. At that point, and only at that point, will they change a syringe, inject in the chosen lubrication or medicine. But the third confirmation is the medicine should dilute the contrast media. So essentially, it's a triple confirmation of the accuracy. I cannot tell you how important this is because the research, and I'll pull up some of it, I have it on my desktop here, uh, indicates that at least one out of three in the knee will miss the joint space. Interestingly, the, the non-fluoroscopically guided injection of the other joints, well, your accuracy gets even worse. The shoulder is very difficult. The hip is almost impossible to hit actually without imaging, and the ankle as well. So if you went somewhere, to get back, circle back to the question, I didn't get good results. What can you do different that might make it work better? Because this all makes sense to me. Is the starting point is you must have a precise application of the medicine. If you're on a three to five treatment series and you miss one or two of those, the outcomes may be limited to absolutely none at all. And this is a major factor. Again, we don't understand why doctors don't all use this technique, but they don't. I mean, the machines are very expensive. The utilization of them are expensive, the maintenance, but at NYC Pain MD, we just don't spare any expense because we know the, the uh, failure rate could be much higher without doing this. So that's an absolute. And if you had treatment without fluoroscopic imaging, and I don't think ultrasound is even nearly as good because it doesn't triple confirm, then there's a good chance that's the reason. So if you ever came and saw us and we decided to take your case on, uh, everything would be applied with the fluoroscopy and our technique, which we use the moniker precision arthritis targeting. So, so I, that sums that up. But I'll, while you ask your next question, I'm going to pull up a little uh, little research here too for you. Yeah, and it's my understanding too that you guys have had quite a few patients come in that have, that have had had visco supplementation, the gel injections elsewhere, and it didn't work. And they they either listen to you talk or somehow they found out that you guys are are doing this di differently and they've come in and they've and they've gotten the results, um and 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 a big factor here definitely could be the fact that you know you guys you guys are using um, imaging so you can make sure the gel gets into the joint correct exact exactly so um you know if you had treatment without imaging. Um, and we decided to take on your case, keep in mind, Brad, we can't guarantee that that will give you a fantastic result. What we can guarantee is that if you don't have imaging, we can almost guarantee your results will be at best tepid, but maybe none at all. But we can guarantee that that medicine, which can be, you know, not inexpensive, will get exactly to where it needs to be. We can also guarantee that if you don't get the medicine where it needs to be, you're not going to get, get the best short, medium, and long-term result. And if you don't, what the shame of it is, patients feel that it does, it may, they may have had blind procedures, the treatment didn't work, and they end up having a major surgery uh, at a great expense and a much higher medical risk. So imagine having to end up in surgery when you could have avoided the whole darn thing to start. And so, yeah, and, and, and I've kind of heard sometimes some doctors discuss and they debate this. And I've heard some guys say that they've done this for a long time and they don't they don't need the imaging because they're really good at it. Um, and then some others say that that, um, you know, the percentages that they miss really aren't that high. Well, what do you say about that? Um, about let's say let let's let's say they have a ninety seven six percent success rate when they could have had one hundred. You know what I mean? Right, right. Well, the best study on knees was done by um, quite a while ago by a doctor named Douglas Jackson, and he found their most experienced injector. Uh, and again, I, I believe, and I'm I'm pretty ninety nine percent sure that. They did this treatment, they did this study rather with normal knees that were wide open 
that still they the best injector they had was only 93% accurate. So Brad, that means in 7% of the cases, he completely missed the space. So think about this. If you were going to get brain surgery, wouldn't you like the neurosurgeon to be 100% accurate? Uh, any procedure, you want it 100% accurate. And, and, and why this is disturbing in a medical world is that we have this technology that can make you 100% accurate. Why wouldn't you use it? So we don't accept you. We don't accept 93%. We don't accept 97. We want 100% accuracy. Again, just to qualify this, that doesn't mean we'll have a successful outcome. It just means we have the best chance of having a successful outcome. And also, yes, we've had many patients that have come and had blind treatments. And when they get it done, what we believe the correct way, they do much better. I had a call just the other day, a lovely woman coming all the way. She's going to bring her husband in, I think, next week. Uh, she uh, brought her husband a couple of years ago, and she had blind, he had ended up having some blind procedures with a very limited result. They had heard about her clinic. Interestingly, she told me about her mother-in-law who went to a clinic where they actually did the fluoroscopic imaging, who's 30 years older than her husband and did fantastic with the procedure. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, we can't understate the importance of precision. Every medical procedure with the technologies of, with the technology available, it, you know, it, it should be utilized. Now, and I'm really not making a, a judgment about the other doctors. We just believe that this is the right way to do it. So we continue to do it and have pretty good success rate overall. And to really ha hammer that point home, two things I, I, I think are really important here. One is the study that you quoted, um, you referenced there, the 93% success. Um, that was done, you believe, on, on a healthy knee, okay? And arthritic knee is going to be much smaller and much, much more difficult to get to get the injection in, into the joint space. Be, be, you know, because when you have arthritis, the joint space shrinks, there's bone spurs, there's all, there's all kinds of stuff there. So, so that number could dra drastically change. The other thing is, e even if it is the same percentage, um, that's 7% miss rate per injection, correct? So if, if you're getting five, five of these injections, the chances are going to go up because, because the miss is 7% per injection. So as you're getting treatments, there's a higher, a higher percentage that one of these treatments or two of these treatments might miss. You know, um, and if it takes and if it takes five to get to get optimal optimal results, um, there's a lot of people out there who didn't get optimal results. Period. Correct. So if you're missing one out of five treatments, you're missing twenty percent of the medicine getting there. If you miss uh, two out of five, you're missing forty percent. So how could you possibly uh, get the um, get get the get the accuracy here's yeah and, and we don't have we we don't have a study i don't think about injecting accuracy in arthritic knees um we have the you have the one that says seven a seven percent miss rate and we believe it's a you know a a, a good help healthy knee um but i can guarantee that 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 rate is much higher than that mm -hmm. arthritic knees you know right 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 so there's a couple of good articles on shoulders and uh, uh, I kind of put together a research packet. So anyone who wants just some stuff on accuracy, we have a whole potpourri of articles and um, uh, studies that uh, indicate, um, you know, all this inaccuracy issue. Here's one from the anal of orthopedics of trauma and rehabilitation. And he says, uh, considerable inaccuracy of joint puncture using surface anatomical landmarks alone without uh, imaging uh, is, notify, is noticed. A larger study has shown comparable rates of ankle and knee joint penetration using surface anatomy without imaging uh, is inaccurate. And we therefore suggest a role of imaging for routine, in this case, ankle injection to be performed in a clinical setting. And they do not overall in their uh, uh, review uh, suggest injecting without imaging, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they go on to talk about a lot of uh, complex m medical terms here. Uh, there are shoulder articles that indicate the shoulder
can be up to 60% inaccurate without the imaging. Uh, the knee, uh, 33, 40% at best, uh, 7% inaccurate. So there is just no way um, any doc can consistently get the medicine in the joint space without proper imaging. Um, and that is the problem with all of this. Yeah, and, and I mean, the real point, point of it is, um, if they were 99% accurate without it, if you can be 100, uh, that's, you, have, you have a duty to, to your patients and to your art, a doctor, to do these things to the best ability and to give the patient the best they can possibly get, get the imaging and do it, do it the best possible way. Be, if you can be 100% and you can, you can watch the injection and you can see the medicine, the gels going into the joint versus mi missing the joint and you know it's in there. Like you said, um, you can't guarantee that getting the gel into that person's joint is going to fix the problem or alleviate their pain or whatever. But you can at least guarantee that you're going to get the medicine into the joint so that if it's going to work for them, it's go they've got a shot at it, correct? Right, correct. Here's an interesting article. And uh, this was written by uh, a Dr. Daly, Dr. Bajaj, Dr. Bisson, Dr. Cole, all out of the Chicago, Illinois. And so let me get to this part. This is very interesting. So uh, it, they're talking about the knee and a total of 660 joints injected. They said without imaging, the accuracy rate was only 79%. But Brad, this is blows your mind. All, but it ranged from 40% inaccurate up to 79%, meaning 40% uh, of the time they might have hit the joint space, 60% of the time they missed. The best they could do is 79% accuracy without imaging. But when they used the imaging, they were 99 plus percent accurate. So you can see, and these are there's study that supports this uh, this premise. And I, I don't think we know that without imaging, your inject your consistent targeting and precision and hitting that target is going to be inaccurate. And we know we have technology that can make it accurate. And we know that if we're accurate, our series of procedures should be theoretically and in practice we find much more effective for the patient and in the end run keep more people to seriously delay or help them avoid surgery to that joint or get off meds or opioids or whatever it is they were trying before so it cannot yeah. be understood and it you know it, it like it almost seems like we're, we're beating a dead horse here over and over again with this accuracy accuracy stuff but man if you're the one with 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 the knee pain and you can't go upstairs you 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 can't go for walks you can't play with your grandkids you, you know you're in you're in pain every single day and you're going to spend some money um you're going to spend some time you have to go through this procedure uh it's it's paramount that is done to the best possible way um and if you're the one fa facing this the difference between not 97 percent and 100 percent or 99.9 percent .9%, whatever it is because you know there's always going to be some human error there of course oh. but um, that's a huge thing to, you know, if this was me and I had that choice, I'm definitely going to take this choice where the, where I, you know, we can sit there and you can, and you can look at that screen and you can actually see the medicine going in, into the joint. It's really, really cool. Right. You know, um, described right in the, in the initial discussion, we're, we're watching that medicine go into the joint space. If you can't see that, you don't know if you delivered to where it was supposed to go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 unbelievable stuff, and you know the patient should be able to you know to see it. If they went somewhere and and um, there was you know this stuff was done, you know it's 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 called blind a lot of times, right. but without the imaging, um, and it didn't work, you yeah, I think you owe it to yourself to give it another shot, or at least at least go and see you guys, and 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 get a screening. And you guys can say, hey, you know, um, um, this was, you know, th this was done blind. Um, we think a candidate for for this procedure. Let's give it a shot and make sure the medicine goes in there right. and see. And, 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 and then we can really see if this is going to work for you or not. Right. Right. Here's a fantastic, uh, fantastically interesting study. And then we could wrap up this discussion. 
This is a study of injecting the sacroiliac joint, the famous sacroiliac that's kind of like near your tailbone. And this patients that do a lot of rotary movements, guys that work hard, uh, dancers, uh, basketball players, golfers and tennis players that twist get a lot of sacroiliac hip and back pain. In this study, they found that when you go in blind to that area, only 12% of the medicine gets to the joint. That means it's almost a 90% miss rate without imaging. So I, you know, I think that, you know, we rest our case on this accuracy issue. So if anyone has any questions on this, if you haven't had it done with imaging, it might be appropriate to reconsider and try again. Uh, it might not. And, uh, you know, we always talk about it. We do have a fantastic special program that patients love. Uh, if they call the office and Brad's going to put a number up, you can come in for a no cost, no obligation evaluation to see if we can help. Um, there's no obligation. You can proceed exactly how you want. But, uh, you know, if, if this sounds like something in your history that uh, might be part of it, um, you can call that number anytime and you can schedule this no cost screening and uh, see if we can help you. Yeah, it's really great stuff. And and I mean, like I said, you know, you can sit there and you can watch the medicine go into the joint and everything. And it's really, really cool. Right. And That's a good point. In fact, some of the pay as you're getting your procedure, you can actually watch the special medical movie camera uh, motion imaging show the medicine going right in. So it's, it's something a patient can be watching while they're getting treated. Yeah, it's great. And and once again, thanks for com coming on again today. I, I know you're getting a ton of uh questions and you know send them over to him um email him he'll answer them we'll get back to you we'll do another webinar next week um maybe some questions again we're gonna we're gonna really talk about some more of the procedures and and some more of the more of the conditions nyc pain md treats because um they're really they're you know they're really doing some cutting edge work there so if you have any questions email alex and we're gonna pop up his email up on the screen here. Email him if you want a free screening. The number's up on the screen. Give him a call. He'll set it up for you. Ask for Alex. Um, he'll get you in, and and he'll find out. And you know he'll get you together with 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 a doctor, and they can and they can work your case and tell you um, if you're a candidate for one of the treatments or not. Correct. Good Anything enough. else to say? Yeah, I, one question is there was one a more minor question that came in a little bit about visco supplementation and back pain. So he, here's the, the deal with that. Uh, the studies have not shown the lubricants into the back to be all that effective yet. Now, going back to our whole discussion, a lot of these studies are done without imaging, so I'm not sure I put full faith in them. Uh, but the joints of the back are a little different. They're so tiny, they're very hard to lubricate. We are finding, though, not only standard procedures for joint arthritis in the back, but applications of platelet-rich plasma and stem cells, which we're just starting to introduce into practice, uh, are starting to show some very, very, very promising results. So, so these are things you can talk about uh, and think about as well. Um, get online and look at the article on stem cells and Jack Nicholas. Because uh, he had a fantastic result, and supposedly he swung a golf club some 10 million times. So, so the visco for the back pain we have not found successful, but there are many, many other techniques where we're keeping a lot of people out of surgery, and, and they're they're doing a lot better overall. So yeah, our webinar our webinar pain. last week was on back pain and stem cell and Jack Nicholson, um, Nicholas. Sorry, Ni right. a Nicholson's a joker, right? right. <laughs> he played the joker. But yeah. the golfer and uh, and how he had tremendous tremendous success with with that, so um, you can look up that one or two, um, and uh, all right. So it's here's the number again. If anyone wants a screening, it's it's 100% free, no obligation. Um, you can come in and find out if NYC Pain MD can help you. Uh, thanks for coming on again, and uh, we'll talk to you next next week. Thank you, Brad.